Hello, recently I got a fly press and so in this video today I'm going to be making some tooling for it. I've got some steel which will fit in the, the pot I think is probably what you would call it so we can make some tooling and I want to make a drift and hopefully a punch as well so hopefully I can make a punch which is also a drift to make bottle openers. Anyway, let's go have a look at the fly, fly press so I can show you what it's about. I should mention I don't really know what I'm doing I've never used a fly press before, but let's just have a go. So this is the fly press. It's a really nice piece of machinery. It's, it's silent, it's really quiet, no electrical um, jazz going on with it. It's all mechanical and it works on this centrifugal force by this rotation with this counterweight here on the end, which then turns the screw down into this, which I'm calling the pot. I don't know if that's the right word for it. And then you can put tooling in here to exert the pressure on your workpiece. So it's generally used for forging operations in a blacksmith shop, but obviously it can be used for other cold operations as well. An interesting thing that I, I like about it is at the top here we have this, this collar, which you can turn, because you see there's this thread on the, on the screw, so there's a thread on a thread, which I just think is really cool. And so that, you can turn this down, and that will be your stopper to determine how deep the pot is going to go on your workpiece. So I don't think that that's a good sign, as when I do that, the pot sometimes drops. So we're going to have to have a look at that and see if we can fix it. Didn't do it that time. Anyway, let's have a look, a bit of a closer look at it. This here is what I'm calling the pot, so this entire piece. You might call it a ram, I don't know, but I'm calling it a pot. I think that's probably the right word. And in here, there is a 50 mil round hole, round slot. So I have some 50 mil round bar, which is a reasonably high carbon steel, so a medium carbon steel. So hopefully it'll be good enough to make tooling out of and it will fit in there. So there is also this bolt. So we'll put our tooling in and then just tighten that bolt up and that will hold it there in place. On this base here, this lovely cast iron base, we've got these T-slots so we can bolt tooling down to the bottom as well as in the ram so we can make tooling which corresponds to whatever tool we have in the pot or ram, whatever you want to call it. So as I said, we're going to be making a punch and a drift, hopefully in the same tool so I can do this in one heat without trying to take the tool out to make bottle openers. So this hole here is way too big, so we are going to have to make a plate which goes on here, which is going to have a solid section and then a section with a hole in. So we're going to sort of move those around as we're forging the, out these bottle openers for a quick transition between the two, the two different, different base plates. Anyway, let's take a closer look at this pot here. Right. Thought this was going to be really hard to get out. <laughs> okay, so I think that this is just like a grub screw in a way, as that just goes in there and holds holds the uh, the tooling in. Just nipping it in. So this does need a lot of cleaning and I'll probably take it apart. Well, I'll definitely take it apart at some point to clean it all up. But I think I'll do that at another time. And also you can see there, I don't think that the part is supposed to fall like that. So that's something that we're going to have to try and fix. And it's probably to do with this screw here. Maybe that's another grub screw style of a thing just to nip onto the onto the top of the screw, I don't know. Anyway, let's get on with making the tooling for the bottom here and we can clean all of this up at, at a later date. So this is what we're gonna be making the tooling out of. So 50 mil round, as I said, and this is, I think this is a medium carbon steel with a high manganese content is I think what it is. We used it a couple of years ago to make some shipping boys and I can't quite remember the name of it. It's, you know, it's a EN whatever. Um, 
it'll take a little while to heat up in the coal forge but let's give it a go and then get some sledgehammers on it to get it down to the right size on the point yeah I really need a power hammer I hope you can see there we're now working it down to octagon hopefully then we're going to go to round and then flatten a couple of sections to get the, the, the right shape for the drift and the right shape for the punch Neaten this octagon up by hand. decent octagon on it. I'll knock those corners down to form a 16-sided shape, whatever they're called, and then roll it to go to round before we flatten a couple of sections to get the actual punch and the drift shape. We've got this nice long taper on the bar. What we need to do now is create a slot punch on this end. So that involves flattening it on this plane. And then we want to create an oval here. And to create that oval back here for the drift, as bottle openers have an oval hole rather than a circular hole. And so to create that, we have to create another flat, but in the perpendicular plane to the first one which we're using for the punch. I hope that makes sense. Let's get on it and do it. Oh, 
I'll just neaten this up by hand. So that's sort of the end. Slot, punch, duck. You may need to do a little bit of grinding on this tool once it's forged, just to neaten everything up and get it all nice. Okay, you can see we've got a nice taper going down to a slot there. But at the moment, up here, where we will be drifting the bottle opener, is round. And if you look at a bottle opener, the hole isn't round, it's slightly oval. Or at least, for me, aesthetically pleasing wise, I like to make them an oval shape rather than round. So, this is what I mean by we've gone in this plane and we've flattened it there. So we now need to turn that 90 degrees so we're perpendicular and flatten this plane which will then create a slight oval which we can probably, we're going to have to grind that to, to shape as forging an oval can be a bit tricky. So we're going to come on this flat of the anvil in this orientation and flatten it there to create an oval. Right, we've got this tool all forged out. You can see there, I hope that here it's an oval, so the, the taper is going from the point back, and here, those two lines, you can see that they're almost parallel. I ended up cutting a little bit off the end just to shorten the tool so we could actually get it in the fly press. Our next step is to start all of the thermal cycles and heat treatment of the tool so we get it nice and tough. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put it in the forge, bring it up to a red, a dull red and let it slowly air cool down to room temperature and that just normalizes the grain structure of the steel and we'll do that maybe three times and in between the normalizing cycles we can give it a quick grind just to get it all nice and nice and neat as it's a little bit rough at the moment but we can get it all nice and neat in between the thermal cycles in between our normalizing cycles then bring it up to sort of an orange a bright orange and quench it in oil and that'll harden it then we have to bring it back and draw a temper in it. Normalizing cycle number one. You just leave it on the side of the forge, cool down. It's probably a little bit hot that, but it'll be okay. All right, it's cooled down. So now I'm gonna take an angle grinder to it and just smooth it all out and get it down to the form that we want. We've got it nice and smooth, ready for normalizing cycle number two, and then I'll do a third one as well. So let's get it in the fire for number two. Got that heat in there. I'll leave that to cool down just by the side of the forge. So it cools down nice and slowly. And then we could do that one more time and then we're ready for the heat treat. Time for the heat treat. And I want to quench off about four inches probably. And then I'll leave the heat in the back of the bar there so we can run a temper into it. It's a very crude way of tempering a tool, but I do it on most of my tools and it seems to work pretty well, so we'll do it on this. Obviously the hardest part of the tool wants to be the end, as that's going to be the punch and then the rest of it is a drift, but we still want that to be reasonably hard so it doesn't deform too much over excessive use. So you can see in the background there, we've got a bit of martensite forming and I've just taken an angle grinder to it to reveal the bare steel. So now we can watch those temper colors just run up to the end. We want it to be about a straw on the very end on the punches. That's, that's gonna be the hardest part. And obviously we do heat treatment so the tool isn't brittle as after quenching, it is very hard, but brittle. So we temper it to give it that toughness so it doesn't just snap when we use it. 
just quench it off. Just the end again, because we still want that heat in the back to run the temper. Quickly clean the surface again so you can see our temper colours are now back here. We've got to let that run down as well. You can see we're getting a bit of a straw or gold coming on the end of the tool. So it's nearly ready to go in the water just to stop and hold that temper. And we'll do this one more time just to make sure that we have a decent temper on it so it's not going to break on us. So it's been a very long time since I've done anything on this video. As you can see, I brought the fly press into the building and also I've given it a lovely new paint job. I only had black, so it ended up being black. I scraped all the old stuff off and then gave it a new bit of paint. You can see we've got the tooling there into the into the uh, the pot or the ram, I don't know what you want to call it, and it's just resting on this plate. So I have used this and I didn't quite I wasn't quite able to forge a bottle opener in one heat. Obviously it rocks at the moment. I need to bolt it down. My floor really is not very flat at all. So I want to refine the process a little bit more of forging out this bottle opener. So th this is the plate that I punch the bottle openers on. And then under here, that's the drifting plate. And I'm thinking that I actually need to make an in-between an in-between one, if you know what I mean. So uh, uh, a drifting plate with a slightly small, or smaller hole in. So we've got a little bit more support on the underside as we go through with the drift. It runs very smoothly now. It's much better. A lovely bit of kit, really, a fly press. Very satisfying to use. No sound. Anyway, hopefully I can do a follow-up video at some point in which I actually use this to forge out a bottle opener in one heat. As I said before, I couldn't quite get it done in one heat. What I might need to do is remake this handle. I was thinking I could remake this handle because I've got an extra, I've got a spare counterweight which I could then put on the top there so we get a little bit more force perhaps. But anyway, it was fun to make that tooling. Lovely bit of sledge work on it to get it forged out of 50 mil round bar. I don't do much sledge work, so it's always fun when I get to do some. So, thank you for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed watching me make this tooling for this fly press. As you can see, we have to spin the screw quite a lot to get it out, but then there we go, and we can forge some bottle openers with it. So I, I did one before and it took me about two heats, I think, but I want to do a follow-up video, as I said before, on actually successfully making a, a bottle opener, you know, the, the ring of a bottle opener in one heat, so we can punch it, punch it out on that plate, one heat, get that one out of the way, and then go through with the bottom plate. Again, another thing that I should do really is bolt that bottom plate down and then have this one almost as a pivot so we can move it in and out, perhaps. It would be much better then. So thank you for watching the video. This one took quite a long time to make. I've been on and off working on the fly press for about two weeks now. Uh, I've been a bit busy with actual work, as I would call it. Um, so thank you for taking the time to watch this, and I'll see you soon.